catch it. Okay, guys, shh, because it's going to start recording, or it's already started. Okay, so this is um, part two of cellular respiration. Why am I sharing this? No, that's not what I want to do. I want to make this large screen. So yesterday we talked about glycolysis. You guys had your uh, homework assignment, discussion board post on it. Um, and the post was on the advantages and disadvantages of glycosid. You guys did a good job. So today we're going to talk about what happens to one of or a couple of the products of glycolysis when there's oxygen present. So the Krebs cycle is what comes next. So during the Krebs cycle, pyruvic acid is broken down into carbon dioxide in a series of energy extracting reactions. And the energy extracting reactions are very similar to what we saw in photosynthesis, so it should look pretty familiar. No, you can turn the lights off, yeah. Uh, anyway, you can turn the lights off. It's not necessary, I don't think. So, we are now on, in your pockets, we're on page four, actually. So now we're going to flip to page five. You don't have to put the light, it's okay. Oops. Remember, we were recording. So, um, the Krebs cycle is highlighted here, and it's happening inside of the mitochondria. So this is the organelle of the mitochondria. Uh, so we've already looked at glucose being split into pyruvic acid, so two pyruvic acids uh, that are, if there's oxygen present, are going to travel into the mitochondria and into the Krebs cycle. So pyruvic acid produced in glycolysis is broken down into carbon dioxide, uh, the Krebs cycle is also known as the citric acid cycle because citric acid is one of the uh, products of the Krebs cycle. So it's one of the first things that is formed, first compounds formed. I should probably pause when you guys are, because I did that yesterday, so I will pause it. So, um, how is citric acid produced? Again, the pyruvic acid enters right here into the mitochondrial matrix, is what that's called. Um, it's basically uh, the mitochondrial matrix. And so, the mitochondria is an, a membrane bound organelle, and you have the inner mitochondrial membrane right here, and then the outer mitochondrial membrane. And this is going to be important uh, for the electron transport chain. When we get to that, you'll see why it's a double bound my Oh my goodness gracious. I wouldn't even know where I was going with that. This is why there are two membranes. Come on. Come on, Silly question. Okay, so the pyruvic acid enters the mitochondrial matrix, which is the innermost compartment of the mitochondria. Okay, so it's the inner mitochondrial compartment. Yes, everybody's good? So once the pyruvic acid, and again, we're following this little, what now? Okay, we have to pause, hold on. Okay, we're back. All right, so once the pyruvic acid enters the mitochondrial matrix, um, the NAD plus will accept two high energy electrons to form NADH. And one thing I want you guys to say, I don't know why that's not highlighted, should be highlighted, right here should be highlighted. But um, NAD is just kind of hanging out here in the cell and waiting for high energy electrons, right? So it's a lot like um, NADPH. So whenever I have the 
H attached to it, you know that it's carrying the, those pair of high energy electrons. So once this NAD plus becomes NADH, it's going to go right into the electron transport chain. So it's going to be used later. So because the NADH um, received the, high, the pair of high energy electrons, what ended up happening was one of these three carbons right here in the pyruvic acid, one of them broke off and binded with the oxygen that was in the mitochondria and formed CO2, carbon dioxide. So this is a waste product of capturing the energy here. So the energy was captured in the form of NADH, right? And the product or the byproduct of carbon dioxide was released because when that carbon broke off, so there was three carbons in the pyruvic acid, one of them broke off and went to form carbon dioxide. And what happens whenever we break, remember we talked about this yesterday, whenever we break bonds, we're gonna have release of energy. So the energy was captured here in the form of NADH traveled down to the electron transport chain and the carbon that was kind of clean to go um, was then or reacted with the car with the oxygen in the mitochondria and then formed carbon dioxide. So then we have this right here, the two carbon compound here is actually called acetyl coenzyme or acetyl CoA. And so we're going to look at that to see what happens to the acetyl CoA. So this is an enzyme that's kind of hanging out here, ready to enter the citric acid cycle. So the acetyl CoA combines with a four carbon molecule to produce citric, citric acid. So we're going to see where this four carbon molecule comes from. All right. But these two carbons here, which are called acetyl-CoA, are going to bind with this four carbon compound. And when that happens, you're going to form citric acid. And at the same type yes, it is the same type that you would find in citrus, like oranges and lime. So if you count the number of carbons here, if we zoom in a little bit, that is totally not even working. Why not? All right, never mind. Can't zoom in apparently. Just zooms this. Oh well, sorry. It's gonna zoom in here. But um, so what is that? Okay, <laughs> it was like Peter Pan's shadow. <laughs> okay, so we have four carbons all together. Remember, we had our acetyl coenzyme, and it was because the carbon broke off early on to form that NADH, and it um, produced the byproduct of carbon dioxide, and then that went into the cycle and, bo and bonded with this four carbon compound here, right? And it's going to now form citric acid. So there's six carbons all together here. So then, come on Shadow. All right, Peter Pan Shadow. So, it's like off, it's, off. it's a little off you guys, or did I skip over? Which one, this one? Yeah. All right, yeah, so basically this is what I just explained about um, the five carbon I'm sorry, the citric acid was formed because of this four carbon compound that was mixed with this two carbon compound to form six. Now the citric acid is actually going to um, break down into a five carbon compound. And as that happens, again, here's there's oxygen available in the, in the mitochondria to grab those um, carbon atoms that get broken off. So there's this little carbon that's going to be um, bumped off and turned into a five carbon compound. Uh, oxygen's going to grab that, and now there's more CO2 released. There's more carbon dioxide being released. 
But every time we see a carbon being um, broken off, we're going to have some sort of fixed energy. I don't know, that doesn't, uh, it doesn't say energy combining with acetylcholine. Uh, so it should be highlighting this right here. It must have, whenever I converted this over to Google Slides, it, it didn't really do a good job. But this should be highlighted because now we have another NADH that's being made or fixed. And it's going to go off to the electron transport chain. And then you're going to have your byproduct of carbon dioxide. So these two reactions kind of, um, they formed carbon dioxide and they fixed NADH. Next, now we're here, now this all got highlighted, which is great. Um, so now we have, since we broke off two carbons, right, and now we have two carbon dioxides kind of hanging out and going out of the mitochondria, um, every time we broke off a carbon, remember, we had some sort of NADH, and we're going to have over here, we're going to have a kind of like a cousin of NADH. But um, we're, we're seeing that it's all going to this mysterious electron transport chain, right? See those arrows? So, so far we have one, two NADH here that was released. And remember, don't forget about this one at the top. This was three NADH altogether. So now, what's different about this portion? What's showing up that hasn't shown up yet in the Krebs cycle? There's two. We've seen an ADH already. So you probably can't see this, but it says FADH2. And then what's this guy? ATP. Anytime you see ATP being, um, being released, ATP is, the cell's going to use that immediately. It's not going to go off. Notice it doesn't have any arrows to the electron transport chain. The ATP doesn't go into the electron transport chain. It's like if you are, like, think of this whole process of glycolysis, the Krebs cycle so far, we're kind of cooking up the ingredients to make ATP, a lot of ATP. But this is kind of serving like a snack. Like, here, have a little ATP. I know that we need some extra energy. Here's a little bit to hold you off until we get to the electron transport chain. Okay, so we saw a little bit of ATP being released in glycolysis as well, right? Do you remember that? So, um, we'll go back at the end. Then. So, here we have the... ADP turning into ATP, we have FAD turning into FADH, and then at the very end, NAD plus turning into NADH. And that goes, so these two guys here are going to go right into the electron transport chain, and ATP is going to be used as energy. Yeah? Everybody get that? So next, we're going to talk about um, how much, what our totals are for the Krebs cycle. So, for each turn of the cycle, one ADP molecule is converted into ATP, and that's going to directly power the cell's activity. It's like a little snack for the cell. Here, have this energy for the muscle cell, whatever cell you're using right now that requires energy. The cellular, oh sorry, excuse me. <laughs> um, did I just go? Whoops, I hit that by accident. <coughs> So we have one ATP molecule that's being sent off for each turn of the cycle. What does that mean for each turn of the cycle? How many cycles, how many turns per glucose molecule do you guys think is we're going to have here? One glucose molecule, how many turns? Six turns. Hmm. Why two? Lucky guess. Okay. So... What activated this entire cycle? What went in? Good. The pyruvic acid went in into the cycle. How many of these do we have? That's three carbon and six carbon. No, 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 no. How many pyruvic acids do we have from glycolysis? 
two. Remember, one glucose broke off into two. And one of those pyruvic acids goes in at a time. Okay? So you have, for each glucose molecule, right? Remember, in the beginning, the glucose molecule is broken in half. And it just takes a half to start the Krebs cycle. So per glucose molecule, how many turns do we have? Two. two. Well, good, because there are two pyruvic acids in one glucose. Good. So how many, um, you guys probably can't see this, but we have one, two, three NADH going off into the electron transport chain, and one FADH2. Okay, so that's one turn of the cycle. How many total per glucose? Who can tell me all the totals of ATP, FADH2, and NADH? And there's volume of acid. Mm-hmm. Six. Six. Keep going, you're right. Six. What? Don't cast. Look up there. It's all in there. Six. Not NADPH, but NADH. So there's one, two, three NADH per turn, and we know we have two turns per glucose. So there's six NADH. How many FADH2? There's one per turn. There's only there's only one there. We have two FADH2. And then two ATP. So that's going to be in the next one. Each molecule of glucose results in two pyruvic acids, which enter the Krebs cycle one at a time. So each molecule of glucose results in two complete turns. So two complete uh, one way travel. Okay, so that was one turn. This is the one turn here. And it ends right there. So, for two turns per glucose molecule, you're going to have six carbon dioxide because you had one released here, one here, and one here. Two ATP because you only have one. Eight NADH, one, two, three, four, times two. And then two FADH2. Nick, put your phone away, bud. That's okay, but so Lexi, stop texting Nicholas. Okay, that is the Krebs cycle. That's it. That's here. We only have the electron transport chain left with ATP synthesis. Yes, then we'll be done with the packet. And we'll watch the crash course. So how does the electron chain use high energy electrons from glycolysis and the Krebs cycle? So remember here, we were looking at all of these arrows that are pointing to the electron transport chain. And it's pointing whenever we had an NADH, we, it went to the electron transport chain. So we had one, two, three, four per turn. So we had all four of those go into the electron transport chain. The ATP went off somewhere else. And then the FADH2 also went to the electron transport chain. <clears throat> so the electron transport chain is where, is where ATP is going to be in abundance. Okay, This is where all the ATP is going to be fixed. So the electron transport chain uses those FADH, NADH2s, no, I'm sorry, FADH2 and NADHs to fix ATP. What, what in the world? Where are we? Here. We are here. So, this is um, a lot like photosynthesis. The NADH is going to pass its high energy electrons to the different um, protein channels.
and it's going to pump out hydrogen. Look at this right here. There's an abundance of hydrogen ions, and they're all positively charged. So there's too many here, right? So what do they all want to do? Do they want to stay there? No. Where do they want to go? They want to go um, inside. Good. They want to go back into the mitochondrial membrane, uh, mitochondrial matrix. So remember I told you guys there's two membranes for a reason? So the electron transport chain is going to pump those hydrogen ions out into the intermembrane space, so not completely out into the cytoplasm because they'll be lost there. They're just pumping them out. They're just making a concentration gradient, right? They're forcing that positively charged concentration gradient. Um, they're forcing those hydrogen ions to just be gathered up, concentrated in the space. And it's... Um, they're going to want to come back into the cell because the cell, the, not the cell, my goodness, they're going to want to come back into where? The matrix. The matrix. Good, they want back into the matrix. So those they're hydrogen ions, those hydrogen ions are going to want to go right back. And as they go back, they're going to spin that ATP synthase door. Remember that revolving door? When you run through it, you push your, it revolves, right? So the same thing happens here. As that, Caramba. As those hydrogen ions are pushed back or want to travel back in through the membrane and into the, matrial, the mitochondrial matrix, they're going to push this revolving door and they're going to attach an, a phosphate group to the ADP and form ATP. Okay? So... At the end of the electron transport chain, the electrons combine with hydrogen ions and oxygen to form water. Um, and I have a little video for that as well. So this is also where water is formed. So remember that the products of cellular respiration are carbon dioxide, water, and then the, the ATP, cellular energy, right? So the video really does a great job. Um, the crash course does an awesome job of explaining it. You guys will really get it. After. You guys leave at 11.30. Okay, so we've got a good bit of time. So the energy generated by the... So as the electron... Um, are attached to the protein channels, they're pumping those... Hydrogen ions out. Okay, so they're pumping it. They're pumping the hydrogen out and creating that positively charged uh, space, inner membrane space, to force all of these little hydrogens to want to come back in. Probably we will watch the video tomorrow. Not tomorrow, Thursday. Um, you guys have a test. I should have been able to test biology too. You guys will have a test next Tuesday. Just let us know when. Wednesday? Wednesday. Okay. Wednesday. Okay. Wednesday. Wednesday. So hydrogen ions pass back across the mitochondrial membrane through the ATP synthase. This is the little spinning door here, causing the ATP synthase molecule to spin. With each rotation, the ATP synthase attaches a phosphate to ADP to produce ATP. We are almost done, yes. Well, I think I know the answer to the total point. Is it about like 30 molecules of ATP per molecule? You know what I like for? 30. About? So, is it like 30 to 1? So there's you're you're gonna see in that um so if you add up all the totals in that worksheet, 
It's two ATP in glycolysis, two ATP in the Krebs cycle, and 32 in the lifetime transport chain. So this right here, these hydrogens shooting across the ATP synthase, every time they do that, each hydrogen atom fixes an a, uh, a phosphate group to an ADP and releases one ATP. <clears throat> Very good. Exactly. So Nick Nick said that the electron transport chain on the Krebs. So this is the aerobic cellular respiration or the aerobic respiration. Yeah, the anaerobic portion. And there's one more part to the anaerobic respiration called fermentation, which is what we're going to look at on Thursday. That's where the glycolysis just keeps kicking in and it never goes into cellular respiration or the aerobic cellular respiration. So um, the totals are... Oh, or do you guys need, yeah, I think this was a slide you need, right? Or did I give you that slide? Yeah. So there's no more, there's nothing else to fill in. Um, but you get two ATP glycolysis, two in the Krebs cycle, and then 32 in the electron transport chain. Um, and this is just for one molecule of glucose. We'll do all of this work. Okay. And, um, so, and this is only 36% of the total energy potential of glucose. 64% is waste energy or thermal energy. Also, the cell can generate ATP from just about any source. We've only looked at glucose, it's a good example. Um, complex carbs are broken down into glucose. Lipids and proteins can be broken down into the molecules that Meet, that enter the Krebs cycle or glycolysis or several places. So the acetyl coenzyme A is um, part, is, it's, a, it's made up of proteins as well. So it's made up of things you would get from proteins. Um, the lipids are important in the, in the mitochondrial membranes are made up of those phospholipids. So those are important. So all these things are um, also important, it's not just glucose, which is part of what your homework was yesterday, right? I think we're done. So the homework tonight is going to be... So this is where you would find your homework. It's going to be on the welcome page in the biology section. It's going to be to the side here. Um, Chapter 9 Homework Assessment. Oh, darn. It's on freeze. Okay. So here, I'll repeat it. It's still, it was still on freeze. So again, it's this right here, the Chapter 9 Homework Assessment. You would just have to click that link and start it. Um, I'm also going to put these videos here on recorded lessons. You have a test coming up on Tuesday, and that should do it. Right. Well, I'll let you touch the news and get the reason she